Okay, so once again, everyone, very good morning. Assalamualaikum. I hope everyone is doing well and faring well, getting ready for the um, next MCO that's going to start tonight. So we can continue on with our work from home and another two or one and a half more weeks of uh, teaching from home. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning for ADEC's second session of Come Peek Into My Online Class. So we're hoping that we will be able to run this session perhaps once a month or uh, several times in a semester. We had one a couple of weeks ago, I think back in November, with uh, one session where we had a lecturer from the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences who shared her classroom and her class spectrum with us. And today, I am very happy to welcome and also to introduce yet another one of our colleagues, Dr. Muhammad Faiz Muhammad Saleh from the Faculty of Engineering. So welcome, Dr. Faiz. Thank you for joining yes. us. Just to share with everybody here, what we're going to be doing is Dr. Faiz will be sharing with us what he does with his online class and what he does with his class. And he'll also be sharing a little bit of um, some findings from research into e-learning. And then after that, we can have a short question and answer session if anybody wants to ask Dr. Faiz about any of his practices in his class. And when we are completed with that, if we have time, I will also do a little bit of sharing and hopefully I can bring you to peek into my online class. My initial plan was to actually bring you into my Spectrum class, but um, I guess that probably won't, uh, we don't know yet whether we'll be able to, to do that, but no worries. If we cannot log into Spectrum, I will bring you invite you to peek into part of my online class, which is conducted via telegram. So uh, hopefully we have enough time for all of that. Okay, so I think Dr. Faiz is back in. We'll just wait for Dr. Faiz to turn on his camera and mic, and then we can start with Dr. Faiz's sharing and we can peek into what Dr. Faiz does in his class. I know it's very interesting. <laughs> We're doing this and I'm pretty sure that every single one of us has probably experienced this with our online class either last semester or this semester either once or twice or um, happening the entire time. This semester I actually started off um, trying to do my classes like giving lecture but I had problems so that's why I actually ended up moving to Telegram which I'll talk about later. So Dr. Faiz, I think... Alhamdulillah. So thank you again Dr. Amira for the introduction and Assalamualaikum and very good morning uh, to Professor, mm -hmm. Associate Professor, mm -hmm. Doctors, Lecturers and all participants uh, for today's sharing session. So thank you again Adat for inviting me to share what I did in my class. So actually, there are not much that I can share and I think it's not much different uh, with what the lecturer did and I am still learning. And I believe that uh, maybe uh, other lecturers inside here or the other, uh, the other places have more interactive, uh, good, more excellent uh, e-learning delivery. So I hope uh, through this sharing, I can share or I can benefit, a little benefit to all and also myself. So for today, I would like to share, uh, before I share about uh, my class, which is the peek into my class. And actually it's not uh, exactly peek, but uh, to share what I did in the class. So I cha cha peek lah. <laughs> and before I, uh, to explain what I did in my class, I also want to share about uh, some research papers uh, to the online. I heard some noise. I think. Uh, so, so if you can continue, uh, I think just someone did not mute. Oh, so okay. My... So before I share what I did in my class, so I would like to share some uh, research uh, report about the online learning readiness. And I believe that uh, UM also have made a survey and our faculty also have made a survey what is the readiness of our student towards this uh, e-learning that we have done uh, this semester and last semester. So I think most of us, uh, or the same like me also, I'm also about worried 
So how the interaction between us and the students uh, compare with the face-to-face -face learning? So for example, like uh, the lack of the human touch uh, as sensory student in comparison, their, their facial expression, their, uh, sometimes we did joke inside our class and the engagement that I just mentioned. So there are some study that do this kind of uh, online learning readiness about the uh, students. And I think that about teaching or delivering the uh, teaching and learning, it is a change with the time and also change with the type of the student that we have. So it's not exactly that we can say that uh, the type that we use in the e-learning will be more suitable in every time, but I think it might be changed uh, depend on what the student background, what the student level of education and so on. So in this study, they did some uh, studies in uh, various type of student. So they changed on the, I think quite interesting, they changed the geographical location. So this work has been done by uh, a researcher in UITM, if I'm not mistaken, this researcher. So they have did sample to the student with the different ge geographical location. So from West Malaysia and East Malaysia. So East Malaysia is Sabah and Sarawak. So almost half and half the numbers of the students. So I think they did around 399 students. And they also did uh, the different level of uh, educational background of the student. So degree and also diploma. So what they found first about the readiness is what the challenge that the student have. So it depends actually on, I think it's quite interesting because it depends on the educational background of the student themselves. For example, like for the degree student, they rank the challenges that they have, uh, which is the first one is the internet connectivity. But for the diploma student, they rank it, uh, the difficulty to understand the content of the subject. So here we can see that uh, based on the student background, it's also affect how they preserve or how they receive our teaching and learning. And the second point that I think is quite interesting is uh, the second challenge faced by the degree student is they said that there are too many different online learning methods used by different lecturers. So this might be due to the how they can master how to use that kind of method and so on. So I think it's quite good in UM we have standardized that our uh, main or our official e-learning is the spectrum and then we also use the MS Teams. So also about the response from the student because for the teaching and learning it's not totally a one-way uh, delivering in learning. It's not totally one way from the lecture, but we also need the response from the student. So the student also need, uh, they have the challenge about their self-management, their desire for learning, their self-control, and just, I like, uh, just like I mentioned that the internet efficacy, the online communication self-efficacy, and also the motivation for the learning. So if we hope, if we uh, hope that our class will be going smoothly, and the teaching and learning is delivered very good. So it's not only the lecturer do the best, but I think also the response from the student or the commitment the student that we also need. Then what they also uh, found in their uh, research work that I think quite interesting is, uh, I'm, not, I, I, I'm not sure it's interesting or not, but their intention to continue using online learning, if you can see here, for the degree program, it is half, almost half of them uh, disagree to continue to using online learning. And then they also have done that which online method of uh, learning that they like or they prefer. So almost more than half, 69% said that the pre-recorded lecture uploaded mm -hmm. to uh, either Google Classroom or YouTube that they prefer inside their e-learning uh, classes. So, and then we can see that uh, the lowest one is 3.3% uh, about the WhatsApp or using the method of WhatsApp voice message. Or well, sometimes uh, maybe we also worry that 
if you use the pre-recorded, so the interaction between the student, for example, like uh, how the student will uh, ask the question on that time and how they uh, want to uh, understand immediately. So there are some also report did by this chunk that even though university students do not normally ask question in face-to-face -face lesson uh, due to some social stigma, so they also have the same problem or the same uh, self-efficacy in the online communication. So we, from this one, I think we also cannot say uh, directly that uh, the, 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 by using the online or live uh, lecture, so we can have more interactive session with the student. Okay, so that is uh, about some interesting uh, research report that I would like to share with everyone. So next, I would like to share what I uh, did in my class. So before I share what I did in my class, actually I consider uh, this kind of three aspect in delivering my lecture. The first one, uh, the delivering of the lecture exactly. And, and then I also think about how the student will receive the lecture. And then the second one, how to assess the student understanding inside our class. And this is also depend just like I mentioned, how the student commit with our uh, try to uh, check their understanding in our topic. And then the most important part that I think uh, important inside this e-learning teaching, teaching and learning is the communication between the student and the lecturer. So how we inform the student all the information related to our class and how we get their feedback and how, how we deal with the feedback. And for me, I think there are many types of, uh, of student style. For example, some students uh, will learn from the big picture into the small picture. So they want to understand from the big picture and then they want to understand uh, in detail in the small part of the content. There are also some students uh, would like to understand from the small part until a big picture of the content. So this kind of style, different style of the student will affect how they will participate in interaction between us. Uh, for example, if the from the big picture into the small, uh, the detailed content inside our content, they will ask the question, I think maybe in the last part in our class, but for the student which have the style want to know or want to understand immediately uh, the, the small component inside our content, they will ask a uh, question or they will un uh, want to understand it immediately uh, by interacting into our uh, lecture. So by considering this thing, I will uh, share what I did in these three types of delivering, assessing and communicating with the student. Uh, again, I repeat, I think it's not much different uh, what I think the other lecturer did, but I hope that uh, I can share some benefit with uh, you all. So for the communication, because I think in the e-learning, uh, what the student need to do, what the student uh, expect they will have in the class, I think it's important for us to clearly uh, inform them what they what we do in uh, this week or in next week. So I think in uh, our university we also have uh, prepared the the form A which have the details of uh, the content of what we do in the semester and how the uh, the content will be delivered. But for me, I think uh, we also need to put more information regarding what we will do inside our class, uh, specifically in the uh, every week that we have. So in my case, just, I'll, uh, just like I said that I use Spectrum as mm -hmm. the official uh, learning, teaching and learning inside my class and also Microsoft Teams uh, for the uh, live lecture and also for the recording lecture, I use Microsoft. Uh, straight. So as I said that uh, in order to inform or in order to give information to the student, so every week for the class, I will prepare what is the uh, step that they need to do. 
So for example, uh, in this one, I use spectrum uh, and I said that for this week, uh, week 18 December class, so they need to join uh, the live meeting to the MS team. And then they need to read this survey for their attendance given this uh, time and then uh, what they need to do inside the class. And I also again repeat uh, the same information inside the MS team. And I believe that when they know exactly what uh, they will need to do inside or next class or the, 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 the class that will happen in two weeks or three weeks, so they can prepare uh, for the class and also they feel assured and they feel don't, do not worry that they are missing the class or they are uh, not attending the class. And I also put the details sometimes inside the Microsoft Streams because when I do the recorded lecture or sometimes when we uh, watch the YouTube, uh, we also tend to read the description of the video before we watch the total or uh, the, the full the video. Okay. So that is how I communicate uh, to the class about what I will do in the class and when the class will do or the attendance and so on. And I think it's very important for us to communicate with the class through the clear and uh, we make it official uh, communication method with our class. And I also put the alternative uh, method for the communication. So I use also email and also WhatsApp. I think that uh, sometimes just before connectivity is also uh, challenges faced by the student. So sometimes they cannot uh, connect us with the spectrum just like today that we have problem in the spectrum. So when they have the alternative, so I think they will feel safe or they feel assured by using the other alternative method that they can communicate with us. And I also, uh, and our university also have did a tremendous effort in providing uh, the student uh, about the, the, the internet, the support of the internet and connectivity. And then the second one about the delivering of the lecture, I think same with the other lecture, I use two kind of technique, which is one if the live online lecture and one more is the recorded lecture. So for the live online lecture, mainly I will use the MS Teams and I also use the Microsoft whiteboard inside the MS team. But sometimes there are students that have a connectivity issue when uh, we use the MS team and I also did use the uh, Google uh, Google Meet uh, when the problem happened. So, but for this semester, mostly I use the MS team because I think MS team have uh, all the function that we need inside uh, to deliver our uh, class lecture. And then uh, for the recorded lecture, I use uh, some of uh, recording uh, software. I use the screencast or you can use the other uh, software like the uh, OBS studio. For the for the screencast, it just only can record in 15 minutes and the 15 minute video I upload inside the MS streams uh, since we the student and us all have the uh, access to the MS team and also MS streams. So the student can uh, watch my recorded lecture inside the MS team and they also can comment and so on inside this MS uh, stream. So just I mentioned inside uh, the work done by the researcher from the UITM that uh, the student mostly like or prefer the recorded lecture. For me, I think it depends on the nature of the content or the nature of the topic that we teach on that time. Uh, for my experience, I found that if uh, the content is quite easy to understand or if the content is more theoretically, uh, not much to be imagined, so the student prefer to use the recorded lecture. However, for 
the content that need deeper understanding, quite hard to be understand, need some imagination or calculation and so on, the student are prefer to use the live online lecture. And I like to use this whiteboard by uh, draw or by write by hand what I will teach and the student can interrupt me directly what they do not understand by also write uh, together inside that Microsoft whiteboard. And then for assessing the student understanding in my uh, class, uh, I did use Spectrum, uh, MS Team, and also the other alternative method like WhatsApp. So for example, in uh, Spectrum, I did uh, I after my class is finished in order I for me to check their understanding in that week uh, lecture content. Uh, however, I found that when we did this kind of uh, mini report that uh, the student have many kind of report and they are uh, they are feel burdened with this kind of report even though they are not too much just to test their understanding. So for this kind of checking their understanding through mini report uh, for each classes, I think we need to think about their numbers of assignment, their numbers of burden and so on. And then I also use the feedback uh, function inside the spectrum. So I survey how they understand inside that class and what they effort to understand their class and if they have question, they can put the question inside the spectrum. And I also did uh, some discussion with our class to access their understanding. So same by using the whiteboard, so I can put question, I can put uh, a real application and so on. Then they can discuss with me directly by writing down inside the whiteboard or or uh, directly asking me what they do not understand. So I think the other type, for example, like uh, same with the other lecture, I think in online lecture class. So we also did, I also did to ask a question to the student in order to check their understanding and also did some uh, review question to discuss uh, about their understanding inside the lecture content. I think what I did have uh, explained how I communicate to my class and how I deliver my lecture and then how I access the understanding uh, of the student inside my class. Uh, it is quite fast, but I think that's all the sharing from uh, Thank you, Dr. Faiz. That was very short and sweet. I can imagine that your lectures and your classes are probably just as nice as well for the students. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, before we continue on, I think maybe perhaps we can open up to the floor. If anybody among us here has any questions for Dr. Faiz, if you'd like to know a little bit more detail, uh, feel free to raise your hand. Or if no one is speaking, feel free just to um, turn on your mic and go ahead and ask your question. Okay, uh, Dr. Nurul Huda, silakan. Assalamualaikum. Uh, Selamat pagi. Dr. Faiz and also Dr. Uh, Amira and everyone. I just um, I just want to get uh, more information on the lecture feedback that you you, uh, you have done in your class. You know, what kind of feedback that you get from the student? Is it in terms of content or is it in terms of delivery? Thank you, Dr. So for the feedback, actually I did uh, three kind of feedback. First one about uh, themselves. Is their connectivity is okay? If their uh, their health is okay and so on. Right now we have the flood in Pahang. Alhamdulillah, in my class there are no student from Pahang uh, that I just. And I also did. That is most important. Well, if they don't understand what uh, I 
my lecture so it's uh, it's, it's a big problem so i need to change how i deliver and i need to change how can i make the uh, them to understand and then the second one about the delivery method uh, i also met back about the delivery method for example they want to do more discussion inside the class the learning through the discussion or they want more about recorded lecture or how they want to ask me the question is it through the whatsapp is it through the uh, mm. ms team to do, do the live question and answer or to the microsoft stream in the comment and so on I did that in time of it okay thank you Thank you, Dr. Nura Huda. Thank you, Dr. Faiz. Um, if anybody else would like to ask a question, you may raise your hand as well. Sounds like someone's opened their mic, but I cannot quite identify who that is. You can go ahead and ask your question. Okay, that's all right then. I hope it's okay. I will take the opportunity to ask um, a question to Dr. Faiz. Dr. Faiz, um, I'm quite curious to know how do you arrange when you do a live lecture and when you do a recorded lecture? Is it like uh, you will have combination in one week or will you have one week live and one week recorded? Uh, it's not a combination, but through the 14 weeks, uh, I fixed that uh, this content this week is recorded lecture and this specific week is a live lecture. So usually I will think about the content. If the content is okay with the recorded lecture, so I, I will put inside the form A that I use the recorded lecture. I see. Okay. And for your recorded lectures, how long are they usually? Uh, it depends. If the class is uh, two hours, usually I put uh, the, 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 the free time around half an hour for them to uh, do the question inside the video. And for the video itself, I did not uh, make it for one and a half hour long because in my experience, for, for me, myself, I, I do not like to see the video <laughs> because it's quite difficult to review back which part that I want I need to see that's why I make the video shorter short uh, 15 minutes 15 minutes 15 minutes and part by part so that the student can easily review back uh, in which part they want to see and easy for them to put the question inside the comment and easy for me also to find in which part the question is <laughs> Oh, very interesting. And when the students actually give their comments or questions, is that inside Microsoft Stream, the comment? Uh, I think they have a comment function in Microsoft Stream. Uh, actually, I explained to them that they are freely to put uh, the question either inside the MS Stream or inside the MS Teams or in the Spectrum. In my experience, some students directly put in the MS Stream when they record a lecture. Okay, and what about for the live lectures? How do you handle questions and comments for those? Uh, for the live lecture, uh, since in uh, we can directly ask the question to them and they can directly ask question to me. So I just uh, live uh, answer the question. And if they have a question after that, I also put inside the MS team that they can post their question inside there. Okay. Um, WhatsApp. Or they WhatsApp you. Is that in a WhatsApp group or is that like a personal PM? Uh, most of the students like to personal PM then inside the group. <laughs> okay. Yeah, our That's Malaysian sad. students can be shy, right? Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm hogging this a little bit, but I have a couple more questions to ask. I also wanted mm -hmm. to know for your um for your live lectures you mentioned just now that your recorded lectures are quite short 15 minutes for your live lectures how long do you do those lectures uh for the live lecture full uh if the class is uh two hours i will use two hours but they are break and also there are some q a part and also some discussion inside okay. that 
so you have breaks. Uh, would those breaks be like a one minute kind of break or are they like longer breaks, like 10 minute, 15 minute kind of breaks? Yeah, a short break, just uh, like five minutes, something like that. Okay, all right. And last question for me, I'll stop hogging it. Uh, and then anybody else who does have a question, please feel free to raise your hand and I'll get to you after this or you can type it in our chat. But last question for me for Dr. Fai is, uh, how big is your class uh, that you're actually using, um, that you're actually teaching using all of these different methods? Uh, last semester, when we uh, start with the e-learning, it's quite big. Uh, one class is around 50 to 50 to 70, something like that. Uh, and this semester is quite small, around 20 something. So when the class is big, it's quite uh, difficult when the live, live lecture. <laughs> But if the class is small, it's quite easy for the live lecture. Yeah, yeah, it's quite cozy, I think, as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Faiz, for your sharing and for answering all of these questions. Um, I'll just check one more time if anybody has. And if not, we'll give it a couple of seconds and then I will share a little bit about my own class and what I do when um, when we cannot access Spectrum. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Dr. Amira, for this opportunity. And thank you very much, Adek, for this opportunity to share what I did in my class. And I hope that what I share can benefit uh, all of us and myself. Sure. Most certainly, inshallah. Thank you so much, Dr. Faiz. Okay, so um, everybody, if you can give me a couple of seconds, I will take over the screen and I'll share, oh wait, a little bit of what I do, but there is a comment in the chat. Let's just check out what that is in case there might be a question. Okay, all right. Oh, it's just uh, people saying thank you to Dr. Faiz. Okay, that's really sweet. Thank you, Dr. Nurul Huda. All right, so I'm actually going to turn my head because um, I'll just share with you a little bit. Excuse my messy desk. I am using two computers right now for, for our online um, peek into my class. So I'm using my own laptop and I also turned on my desktop computer. So as you can, yeah. So you can see there, uh, I'll just uh, show you that so that you'll understand why I'm turning my head and not times when I have a live class with students, I tend to use several devices. And one of the reasons that I do that is because uh, I'm a little bit worried that, you know, if one of my device breaks down or the connection um, has a problem, then we'll just lose the class. So usually I would have my computer if I'm at home as well as my phone here. And what I usually do to, pre uh, to prevent echo is that I will use one device as the main communication device. So right now I'm actually using my computer laptop and I've got my um, headphones connected to my computer laptop. And on my desktop computer, I've actually turned it on mute. I've um, turned off the camera. Down on my desktop computer so that I don't have any echo. So I do the same thing when I'm at home using my laptop and also using my phone to connect. So what I like about doing this is that when I am, when I am actually um, trying to say, show something on the screen, I can more comfortably look at the screen and see the whole entire screen the way that other viewers or the way that the students are actually seeing the screen. Whereas if I'm using just my one device, then and I'm using the present function or the share function, what happens is that I am not quite so sure what the students are seeing because I know that their view is, is different. So when I have two different devices or two different screens, then I can have one that I control and the other one I can view the same thing that the audience or the students view. Okay, so excuse my rambling. Uh, I, this is actually how I teach in class. So this is sort of like a peek into my class. It's a little quite informal and a little bit all over the place, but um, hopefully it works. 
So I will be sharing um, my, I'll be sharing with you because we cannot get into Spectrum. So what I'm going to do now is I will be sharing with you my alternative backup contingency plan, I guess you could call it that, where I use, um, where I use a chat, uh, namely using Telegram. Uh, to connect with my students and sometimes even to conduct my classes. So you can see here now that I'm sharing my Telegram uh, desktop. So for those of you who may not be aware of Telegram, Telegram is a instant messaging application or platform. It's quite similar to WhatsApp, but it's a lot more robust because it has a lot more functionalities. And the great thing about Telegram is that when we have videos or we have documents or we have um, images, pictures and photos that other people share to us, it doesn't get saved um, on our device. It's actually saved in the Telegram cloud or system. And then that makes that actually helps because it doesn't take up space um, on our tele uh, on our devices. So I used to use quite a lot of WhatsApp, but now I've moved my um, my class communication platform, the alternative communication platform. I moved it to Telegram simply because it saves space. And this is something very important, particularly for students, especially for students from the B40 group especially for undergraduate students, because typically our young um, students from the B40 groups, typically their phones will be the most basic kind of phones. And with a basic phone, you know that there is very little uh, memory and they cannot, they have to keep deleting things on their phone in order to make room for new apps or to make room for new um, media like new photos or new documents um, and things like that. So by using WhatsApp, if I'm going to share anything on the chat, that kind of saves that um, memory for the students' phones. Okay, so allow me now just to uh, share a little bit of my class. So um, this looks a little bit messy, so if you're going to use it, it actually takes a little bit of uh, getting used to it. So as you can see here on my Telegram, you can see that uh, I have several chats that are pinned or several uh, channels that are pinned. So these are actually channels that I use uh, very frequently. And at the moment, what I'm going to be showing to you is my... AQA 7012 lecture channel and my AQA 712 communication platform. So you see that I have uh, another few what Telegram groups as well for other classes. Uh, last semester, um, I also had a Telegram. I conducted uh, most of my classes via Telegram because last semester, um, my students actually, there were several of them that did not have um, a laptop when they were stuck at home. And there were several of them that also had a uh, very bad connectivity issues. And that was the time when, you know, they were still waiting to get their uh, SIM cards. There were problems in the university sending the SIM card, but they gave the wrong address, so they didn't receive it. So there were a lot of issues with that. And because of that, they didn't have enough data to really use the Google Meets or the MS Team kind of um, video conferencing. So because of that, I switched to Telegram and virtually almost the entire class last semester uh, was actually conducted on Telegram. But now I'm using the official, uh, the, the official platform, namely Spectrum and also MS Teams. And I'm using Telegram more as a alternative or as a support. Um, so that, you know, we have an alternative uh, when Spectrum's not working or we have an alternative when I'm really, really busy and I'm trying to get, you know, reach to the students as quickly as possible. And all I have to do is just pick up my phone and, you know, uh, connect to them on Telegram. OK, so um, let me just share with you uh, this. This is a master's level class um, and the students that I have here, they are I think about half of them are actually in China, but luckily they were all agreeable to using platform, the uh, Telegram as a platform for communication. Another half of them are in Malaysia, but 
um, in different parts of the country. And some of them are working, some of them are fresh graduates, some of them are um, you know, mothers and fathers with young children uh, working and studying at the same time. Um, so Telegram, I think, is a very quick and easy way to reach the students that is convenient for them so that they didn't really have to sit down and, you know, open up another app, but rather it's just a, a chat that they are um, increasingly more and more people are using. So I'll show you the uh, Telegram communication platform. Okay, so this is an example of this week's um, class, as you can uh, see here. Okay, let me just make this a little bit more comfortable to see on the desktop. Okay, um, Telegram, by the way, is an app that we can get on our phones, uh, but it's also, they also have a desktop version of it, which I'm showing to you right now. So as you can see, what I do is uh, very often, what I will do is I will, as you can see here, um, I will actually, sh oops, sorry about that. There's a lot of communication and interaction in the class. So you can see all those uh, emojis and all that. Um, so as you can see here, what I typically do is uh, for each week, I will post uh, what the plan is uh, for that week. This is also available in Spectrum, but I repost it here. Spectrum is where I keep everything as a record and as documentation. But Telegram is where I tend to uh, post announcements um, as my first uh, announcement platform. So the students are already aware of this and I've already gotten their agreement and permission to do this. So every week they know that when it's time for class, they should be checking out um, the announcement on platform. So um, what I tend to do is I actually have what I guess I can call a blended uh, or hybrid form of online classes where I am actually doing synchronous live class uh, in the sense that I am synchronously um, and live on Telegram available uh, and I can communicate directly with the students live. But at the same time, uh, the actual lecture content and the actual teaching is kind of done asynchronously in the sense that I have recorded videos that I upload onto um, Telegram and also onto Spectrum. So usually, um, if I'm if I'm really fast, uh, I usually would you know do it on Telegram first, and then later on I will post the same links on my Spectrum under each week's um, topic. Uh, if I'm a little bit slow, uh, sorry, if I do it a bit earlier, then um, sometimes I might post it first on Spectrum, sometimes I might post it first on Telegram, but whatever it is, the announcement will actually come onto Telegram um, at the beginning uh, of the class, so students know to go there first. So just to share what um, I did, uh, I try as well, like Dr. Faiz said, if we have very, very long lectures, it can get, it can get quite tiring. Um, and well, you know, I, I, I stand accused, I am guilty of, of, of going on and on and on and on and, and just not stopping. Like, um, it's so much easier to talk than it is to listen. So I just enjoy talking nonstop. So in order to stop myself from doing that, and in order so that my students don't end up with a really long, boring lecture, because I get very boring after, after a while, what I do is I use um, something called Noom. It's a screencasting software. Uh, which is available for free um, uh, with some limits. So I use a lot of Loom to actually record my pre-recorded, I call them mini lectures. So when I use Loom, I use the free version, which limits each recording to a maximum of five minutes. I cannot go over five minutes. When five minutes is up, the video just stops recording. And I have found this extremely helpful because it caught it it requires me to be really succinct in what I'm trying to say and it prevents me from going on and on and on. So I come into the recording with the mindset that I've got five minutes. So what do I want to actually um, deliver during this short five 
minutes. So I try my best so that each video is actually compacted uh, with, you know, um, it's sort of like five minute, five minute, five minute kind of kind of video. Uh, so for when I record it on Loom, Loom usually just allows you to, as you can see here, uh, there's a link there. So I just use this link. I copy this link into Spectrum and I also copy it into Telegram and I post it to the students. So typically I tell students that, um, okay, I'll show you now where it is in, uh, in Telegram. So this is my communication platform for the class. So this is actually a two-way kind of communication platform. And as you can see here, uh, there are posts from the students on the left side. Um, and on the right hand side, the green one are posts for me. So it's quite um, interactive. You know, sometimes students will talk to one another or students will ask me questions. Um, we have some students that are very, very, you know, uh, engaging. They want to they use emojis, I think, as one way of actually because we cannot meet face to face. It's not like being in the class. Um, you cannot, you know, it's, it's just very different uh, from being in the classroom. So I think using a platform that allows other expressions of um, emotions or thoughts and ideas like GIFs and stickers and emojis, uh, I think students tend to to communicate um, as well using that. So as you can see, there's um, quite a bit of that. Okay, so this is the communication platform for the um, for the class. So it's a two-way platform, and um, as you can see here uh, on the right-hand side, uh, it actually describes what. Uh, oh wait, sorry, I should probably just uh, show it here. Okay, on the right-hand side here. There's a description of this particular group, and it actually tells us that the Telegram group is our class communication um, class communication group. And I also use Telegram sometimes. Uh, sometimes I use Spectrum Forum. Sometimes I use Telegram to have uh, interaction between students. Like if you want students to do group work during the class itself, I know it's now available on MS Teams, and I think there are some uh, Google classroom or Google Meet accounts that also allow for breakout rooms. But initially that wasn't the case uh, when we started, uh, I think in April of 2020 with the online classes. So I used Telegram to actually arrange for breakout groups for students to discuss with themselves. So this is where I actually tell them that sometimes um, I arrange them into smaller breakout groups so that they can um, discuss with one another. Okay, so this is the communication platform, the two-way communication platform. This is the one-way broadcast lecture channel. So here is where if I have a lecture uh, that I have pre-recorded, that I would actually upload it here uh, as well as Spectrum. And at one point uh, before I realized that I could use Loom, uh, and I had massive problems at the beginning of the semester um, with students. These are first uh, first semester students when they had, you know, initially they had problems trying to connect into into MS Teams. Uh, we had like login issues uh, and some students just didn't know how to connect to MS Teams, how to use it. So initially I also used the lecture channel and the video on um, there's a video, you can actually record a video clip and you can record voice as well. So at the very beginning of uh, the semester when the class just couldn't work, um, I just couldn't deliver the class live on, on, um, on MS Teams because of students' uh, issues trying to get in. So at the beginning of it, uh, we just, I just gave up and I said, let's go to spec, let's go to Telegram and I'll just give you my lecture there. So these are little uh, lectures um, that I've done. This, I didn't do any notes to it, mainly because this was not planned. I didn't plan to do the lecture here, but um, I needed to run the lecture anyway. So I just have some notes. I just record it and then upload. And um, I try to actually keep the recordings um, as short as possible, like under one minute if possible, 
definitely no more than three minutes. Three minutes is like the absolute max that I would do these recordings. But um, now that I've discovered Loom, uh, I've actually found it a lot more convenient because if I cannot do my lecture live via MS Teams uh, for whatever reason, I can just uh, screencast it. This is a, sorry, this is a lecture video that I did. Okay, so. Okay, I don't have the audio on right now, but you can see me talking and then later on, I'll actually be holding something like a board that I wrote down something as a, kind of like a whiteboard that I showed to them. Um, and with my Loom videos, okay, um, my, my pre-recorded Loom videos, what I do is I record them. Uh, they're only five minutes, which is really great. It really helps me to keep the time. And then um, a little uh, about that particular video. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes the title of that particular clip uh, uh, would be enough um, for the students. So basically that's um, what I do. Um, so yesterday, sometimes as well, if I need to conduct the lecture via Telegram, I may also share articles here, which later on I will um, share as well on Spectrum. So it's a little bit of double work, but uh, I actually find it, um, I think maybe some people may, it may not work for everybody. I tend to be a little bit uh, a little OCD, so it's like I want to I want to rearrange everything. Uh, I want to you know have the right fonts and all that. But at the same time, I don't really necessarily have the time to do all that. Sometimes, especially if I'm rushing for class, I don't have time to make it all nice and you know um, in my Spectrum page. So what I do is I just run the class if I need to, and then later on I can go and then put labels and rearrange it. Um, on my Spectrum page uh, so that it follows a nice format that I like. Uh, and I find that quite quite useful um, for myself. So um, that's about, uh, oh, sorry, just uh, uh, another point. Um, so this is actually some videos that I did. This is a lecture that I did yesterday, a hybrid lecture where I posted asynchronous videos. Um, live right after I finish the videos, I just post it straight. It's like every five minutes or so. And at the same time, I am available um, on, on this communication platform for students to ask me questions. So yesterday was a bit of a slow day. There weren't too many questions, but there were uh, other, I think if I just scroll up really quickly, during this asynchronous type of, um, during this asynchronous type of exchange, you will actually uh, have questions from students. Like for example, this was, uh, I had talked about, I think an assessment. So one student um, asked, you know, what they need to do or what uh, they're supposed to do. Sometimes there were also some uh, discussion or questions where students actually request clarification about uh, certain things that I said that Maybe they heard it on the lecture, uh, on the short lecture video, but they didn't really understand it fully. So then they would ask me um, some questions uh, using the chat. So I'm, I actually cannot find one immediately right now, but um, definitely there were some uh, discussions as well uh, with that. Okay. Uh, so that, I think, is my um, sharing for today. It was unplanned. My initial plan was actually to show how I use um, labels so that I can arrange my Spectrum links. Um, so I guess I'll probably do another peek into my classroom when Spectrum is back on, and I can share about that later. So, so, so today, it's kind of uh, my contingency plan. Uh, sharing what I do via Telegram as a backup kind of alternative um, platform for class, which I actually did use last week when I had class and Spectrum wasn't working. So luckily we could go onto this platform and we didn't have to um, disrupt the class. So that was my sharing, um, it's a little bit long. So I will stop now. Um, 
if anybody has any questions, do feel free to, to raise your hand and ask or any comments. Uh, I'll also check out the chat right now. Thank you, Dr. Mira, for the interesting sharing. Thank you. That's Dr. Faiz, right? Thank you, Dr. Faiz. I have two questions. Uh, the first one about what do you think that the student is more prefer to use the alternative method or to use the spectrum or the MS teams? Okay. I definitely use uh, spectrum because uh, I... Sorry, uh, I actually have done a survey on this um, with my previous class. And what I found out was that um, quite a number of the students liked having this alternative uh, way where I actually did the class via Telegram because it actually saved their kind of like data. Um, this, I think it uses less data than a streaming live um a streaming a live streaming class so they actually appreciated that and some of them also liked it because they say that they can lie down in bed with their phone and follow the class so they like that too um and for some students they actually really really liked it because for them it's a natural way of communicating it's a natural extension of how they actually communicate which is um you know through text and through conversations on text, whether it's on WhatsApp or it's on, you know, social media. But I did have um, some students who were telling me that they found it very difficult to follow um, long lines because with, with, with the telegram, what happens is that you, unlike Spectrum, which is very nice, you have, you know, section one or week one and then week two or topic one, topic two. So everything is very nicely organized visually in there. You can easily find what you're looking for. But we actually, I actually had some students who uh, said that it was very difficult for them if they wanted to review back uh, what was in the previous lecture. It was difficult because they had to keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and looking for it. So um, because now I am using Telegram more as an alternative, uh, and not so much as you know my main platform uh, because whatever videos that I do the pre-recorded videos I actually uh, upload that on spectrum so it's much more organized but uh, what I did after I got that feedback I did a survey mid-semester um, after a couple of weeks uh, from the students so when I got that feedback that it was difficult for them to review and look for what they were um, wanting to to review via the telegram what I did then was instead of having one uh, telegram lecture channel okay I'll, I'll bring you to the previous semester's class which is this one AIM uh, 1007 okay uh, so what I did was I then uh, separated into separate uh, I had one wait sorry let me just uh, share here I actually had one um here it is <laughs> i had one channel for one lecture so for example for uh lesson 12 or topic 12 um it's everything on topic 12 is in this channel and uh similarly for uh other lessons uh say lesson 10 uh, everything in lesson 10 was in this channel so when i did this it became a little bit easier for the students to um actually look for whatever they wanted to look for and review it sorry it's a very long answer <laughs> dr faiz nice information so thank you doctor and my second question i think when we use this kind of alternative like telegram or whatsapp i think some student tends to message at the late of night or 24 hours, something like that. So how you deal with that kind of things? Oh, I actually have absolutely no problem with it whatsoever because my I turn off the um the you know the bell notification on on the WhatsApp like it goes ding new message ding new message I just turn that off so um I just reply when 
I am free and able to reply. So I, I actually tell my students um, that they can WhatsApp me anytime they want, even at 3 a.m., because they will not be disturbing my sleep because I don't hear the notification. But because um, I, 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 I am also very, very careful to always tell my students that it's not the same rule for every lecturer. So I tell them, you only WhatsApp me any time of day that you want because I say that it's okay, but don't do the same thing to um, other lecturers uh, because you have to respect you know, their, their private time and their out of work time. So I'm very, very careful to tell students that whatever things that I am lenient or I am flexible with um, does not necessarily mean that they can carry the same behavior outside of my class to other lecturers as well. Thank you, Dr. Amira. It's very nice information. Uh, hi again, everyone. Uh, very, my apologies for the technical disruption just now. Can you hear me now? Okay, I'm guessing that my voice is uh, finally getting through. So thank you so much to Umu and also to Azrul here at the ADAC office because they're actually monitoring this. Otherwise, I would have just gone on talking not knowing that I can, that you, you actually cannot hear me. Okay, so uh, it looks like we don't have any additional questions, uh, but thank you to Dr. Shiba. Uh, I hope that uh, if you have any questions on how to use Telegram, if you want to use it as your backup plan, uh, do let me know. So thanks for that message, Dr. Shiba. And thank you um, to everyone that attended and joined us here. Uh, if any of you would like to share what you do in your class, if you would like to bring us and allow us to peek into your class, please do drop a note to ADEC. You can WhatsApp us or you can send us an email and let us know. And we can set up a peek into my class session so that you can share what you do. And hopefully that can benefit all of our other colleagues and give us all new ideas and inspirations for our online classes. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Faiz, and thank you to Umu and the ADEC team for helping us produce and host this Peek Into My Class session. Okay, see you everybody. Have a good work from home and a good two weeks left of the semester. Bye, Salam alaikum. Oh, I'm so sorry, one more thing. We do have a, 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 a feedback form. Please, please, please do take just a couple of minutes. Uh, click on the link in the chat and give us your feedback for this session. We really, really appreciate that. We need it for, for improvement and it's also very useful for our audits. <laughs> okay, thank you everybody. <laughs>